Well, good morning, everyone. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank uh, CTNMB1. Do you hear me? Yeah. CTNMB1 Foundation and CTNMB1 Association for organizing this meeting. I think it is very rewarding for both families and researchers, and I'm pleased to be here with you today. So, as you know, um, uh, Ch uh, Children's Medical Research Institute is collaborating with CTNMB1 foundations to towards the development of a uh, gene replacement therapy. I'm trying to keep this presentation simple so everyone can understand and basically with gene therapy what we aim is to deliver a therapeutic gene into the target organ and for that we use different delivery systems uh, that will be this box. Um, as a box, we use um, AV vectors or adeno-associated viral vectors. As Leszek already explained very well, um, we use uh, these vectors as the containers and we change all the viral genomes uh, that these vectors ha uh, have and replace them with the transgene of interest, in this case the CTNMB1 gene, uh, with the promoter that will lead to the expression of the protein and the terminator. Uh, it has been already explained that this gene is small enough so we are able to add other regulatory elements to this expression um, cassette and I will explain it with an example that my high school biology uh, teacher used to use when, when she was explaining us. So the DNA will be like the book of instructions to build all the furniture in an, apart in an apartment. So we are introducing in the cell the instructions to build the beta-catenin protein, which is uh, represented with this wardrobe. And we have enough space to add other regulatory elements that will improve the production of this protein. Uh, we can introduce a hammer or a drill or uh, different elements. So we are basically, uh, we have designed different um, transient expression cassettes that will have the instructions for the production of the beta-catenin protein and different combinations of the regulatory elements that will help to uh, the expression of the protein uh, for it to be more stable or uh, more efficient. So, um, as it was already explained, um, when we try to deliver the therapeutic cargo to the target organ, there are sometimes uh, you can le lead to the expression in other, in, in other organs that you don't want to, uh, to reach, and that could lead to the toxicity. And these tools are also important. Uh, we can use them to avoid this toxicity associated to the expression of the gene in a tissue in which you don't want to express the gene. So this is an experiment that we did in the lab. We injected mice that, um, with uh, AV vectors that express the green fluorescent protein. So every green spot that you see here is the expression of the protein. And we injected two different vectors, one without the tools that will sil silence this expression and the other will have the tools that will um, stop the expression and will uh, lead to a safer uh, gene transfer. So firstly we saw in the liver that with these tools we can stop the expression of the green fluorescent protein so uh, there will be no toxicity uh, due to the overexpression of this uh, gene and we also observed the same in the dorsal root ganglion. Um, as you, you can see here, here the spots, uh, the green spots will represent the, the protein that is being expressed and with the tools that we add in the uh, transient expression cassette, we uh, stop this expression. So we can manage this toxicity and we are adding these elements uh, to all of our vectors. So, as I said, uh, we have designed different vectors that contain the instructions for the production of the beta-catenin protein, and we are combining different regulatory elements for uh, ensuring that the, the final delivery vector with the transient expression cassette that we will um, inject to patients, finally, um, will be optimal and will lead to the expression of a functional uh, protein and a stable protein. So, we designed this uh, set of uh, transient constructs and we 
tested them in neural models. These neural models were developed with urban cells. Um, blood cells from urban were reprogrammed. Uh, so this is um, like a reset of, uh, of these cells. Uh, they are not blood cells anymore. Uh, they, they are cells that can be differentiated into any cell type uh, of the body. And we are using them to establish neural models such as neurons or organoids. So we differentiated these pluripotent cells into neuroprogenitor cells and brain organoids. And um, we uh, tested the different vectors to see which one will be more efficient to go into the animal, pro uh, into the animal model. So now, uh, as you will see later, uh, these uh, vectors are being tested in an animal model. And uh, here we can confirm if they, these uh, transgenes are efficient, but the most important thing is that they are also safe. Um, I'm going to show you some of the results that we obtained with these neural models. First of all, with the neuroprogenitor cells that will be uh, a monolayer of cells derived from urban. Um, here we can see that the control cells that doesn't have the mutation have a higher, incre uh, ha a higher expression of the CTNMV1, uh, whereas urban cells uh, have a decreased expression. And when we add these uh, vectors, Oh, we cannot see the graphs very well. I don't know why. Uh, but well, you can see um, the, some, some, some dots. Um, and if you don't see, you can believe me that <laughs> there is one here that is uh, significantly increased. So it is um, a candidate that led to uh, an, an expression of the CTNMV1 uh, gene uh, which was a dramat dramatical increase, if you, if you see the graph. Um, we selected from here the three uh, vectors that led to the highest expression of, the, of CTNMV1 and repeat the experiment with neuroprogenital cells. Again, you see that urban cells have a lower expression of, the, of CTNMV1, and we, when we add this, um, these vectors, we see that well, I, I, I swear you <laughs> that um, there is a recovery in the expression of uh, CTNMV1, okay? Even this one that is the lowest one will be similar to wild type, which is the control. Uh, we also tested this in a 3D model uh, in organoids that uh, you already know a little bit about uh, this now. Uh, this uh, 3D model is very helpful because it has uh, different um, neural, neural cells uh, that are present in the brain. So we have uh, uh, neuro, neuroprogenitor cells, oligodendrocytes, um, mature, uh, mature neurons. Um, it will lead to an interaction of cells that will represent better what will happen in the brain. So again, we see that um, the organoids derived from urban cells uh, have a lower expression of the gene. And when we add the vectors, we see again that there is one vector that can, can reach the levels of, of the wild type um, organoid. So, this, this, this vector was, of course, uh, selected for the animal model, uh, as well we, uh, as on another vector that also showed uh, good results. Um, hopefully, one day we will go to the clinical trial, but before that, we have to collect a lot of data. Uh, we need to know that it is safe and it is efficient, and now we are uh, applying for a grant in which we will try, we will try to find a, a, uh, funding to do this, the same experiments with uh, uh, cells from other patients. So we can test the same with different mutations in the CTNMV1 gene. So we can show the regulatory agencies that this uh, product will be universal and will be beneficial for, our, for all the patients. Um, thank you very much for your attention and um, yeah, see you later. <laughs>